Deuteronomy 76, read it again. Read that for me. Something occurred from when we were listed as the greatest nation on the earth to what we became now, right? Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Despite what you've been taught, you've been taught that you are the wickedest people that have ever walked the face of the earth. When they look up the word black, the definition means what? Give me all of the adjectives that describe black. Dirty. Dirty. Come on, Nancy. give me some more. Come on, young brother, you give me some. Disgusting. Because we're gonna we're gonna shift this to your focus now because you're the men, you're the man of the species. There's a, there's a role that our men must play. Read. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Give me Ezekiel 3 and 17. We as the men, what position do we hold in our nation, young man? Black man? Yeah, what, what position do we hold as men? Or any nation. What position does the man hold the inside his nation? The leader. Read. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman. What is a watchman? Like when, when you think of uh, war movies. A watchman sits where? He sits in the top. What is he looking for? Invading armies. He's looking for danger, some type of harm that might affect his people. So if he see that harm coming, what does he do? He alerts the rest of the people of impending doom, right? That's this right. is the position that the men are in. See, because I heard you say a statement. You just don't know. You didn't understand. You said that it's not your job to judge. Judge is this. If we put you to death, for wearing a dress. We're not allowed to do that. But do you judge your children? Do you have children? No, I do not. Will you have children? Are it's you still? Weird. One day you will have children. When your child touches an iron, what would you do? Take his hand away from him. You mean spank that hand? Right. Spank his hand. Beat that butt? Yeah. To let them know the reason why I'm beating your butt is not out of hatred, it's out of love. So I'm here to save your life. This is what we are here to do, to save our people's life. That's but right. we must Warm. We must rebuke. We don't judge. Judge is murder. We're not allowed to murder, but we're allowed to tell every one of us our faults. And we're allowed to accept when we make a fault, somebody tell us, hey, you're doing wrong. You're being adulterer. You stop that. You stop treating a black woman, Latino woman, and Native American woman like a whore. That's, That's right. the job. How old are you, young brother? 22. 22. Are you married to that sister? No, not yet. Guess what you, guess what you uh, doing to her? You're making her a whore. Because according to the Bible, there is no boyfriend and no girlfriend. That's right. So if you're not willing to marry that woman, separate, separate yourself from that woman until you are mature enough to take on that responsibility. That's, That's right. right. I have made thee a watchman into the house of Israel. So we're watchmen, brother. We are our people's watchmen. We must tell them they're right because we were we all grew up. Get as many women as you can. That's what determines your manhood. You know? But in all reality, that deter determines your weakness. But you were taught by people of our age bracket. We were taught from the people over above us. So whose fault did it lie on? It, it, it lies on us. See, but once we inform you that it's wrong now, then who does it lie on from this moment on? You, read. So is that taking the blame off of you? The, the, the blame is, is that taking the guilt out of your system the and putting it The blame is completely off of us now. now you're transferring spirits. Read. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. So we're supposed to warn our people. That's our only job. We're not going to handcuff you and make you follow the laws. We're going to tell you, thus saith the Lord, after that moment on, it's up to you and you alone. Read. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his ways. Excuse me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning. Okay. God told us to go out and warn the wicked. Right? Give him warning. This is from God. This is not our word. That's Read. Right. Nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die. So our job is to go out and warn our people of their wickedness, right? And it says, if we warn them, I mean, don't warn them, that person's going to die regardless. Whether we warn them or not, they're going to die. But there's a repercussion that's placed upon our heads if we don't warn them. Read. Same wicked man shall die in his inequity, 
but his blood will I require at thy hand. So a lot of people come by and say, why the heck are these dudes out here screaming at people, right? That's the answer. We're out here to save our own lives by attempting to save your life. Now, when I first came up, I said something occurred from the time that God said that we were the greatest nation on the earth until now, until what we become. The brother had went, he, he scratched the surface, Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Something occurred. It's not just the woman, it's the man. It's both of us. It's not the children, it's the mothers and fathers as well. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. Read out. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. See, one of the curses that fell upon us was a curse that you would not know who you are. You would no longer know who you are. He went into the slave ship. Everybody knows the uh, transatlantic slave uh, trade. Everybody knows that. But there's some things that is not readily available to us when we think of it. As an example, our heritage, it was taken away from us. Verse 37. Verse our name was taken away from us. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. A proffer. Astonishment meaning you're amazing to all of the other nations. And, and I, I don't care if you're one of those black or Latinos who walk with their nose in the ear like, oh, I'm 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 intelligent, I'm smart. You a nigga like the rest of us in the ghetto like the rest of us. That's right. Group like the rest of us. That's right. Michael Jordan is just like us. He's just a little bit more wealthier than us. But guess where he's at? In his position of power. He has none. All he is is a gladiator. That's all he's ever been. All Mike Tyson, all of those sports figures, all they've ever been were entertainers. That's right. Just like we were enslaved in the, in the past, some slaves got better food than the other slaves. But guess where they were at? They were slaves. So lower our noses a little bit. Read a proverb and a byword. A proverb is a dark saying, something, an intelligent saying, like when it applies to the black and, and Latino man and woman, right? If you want to hide something from a black man, you put it where? In a book. That is a proverb. That's a dark saying. That's a deep saying. Something intelligent. You become that. You become that. Read. And a byword among all nations. A byword is something, a derogatory name. Guess what the derogatory name you're called today? We don't see it as derogatory, but nevertheless, it is. So if I just came up and say, Paul, and I just kept calling you Paul, it doesn't even rhyme with Gladys. You can understand if I say next. You can say, okay, I can let it go with that. But if I just kept calling you Kevin, kept calling you Denise, if none of these names rhyme with your name whatsoever, if you kept correcting what am I doing from that moment on? I'm kind of being disrespectful. So when they named you African American, this is your proverb and byword because there's a dark saying or intelligent saying that comes with the actual derogatory name. If you want to hide something from a black man, you put it in the book. That derogatory name or byword is the black man. That's just the color. See, you got East Indian people. Some of them are you, 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 you and him and him might be the and him are the darkest ones that stand with you, right? But there are people on this earth that's way darker than you. Do they consider themselves black like you? Because black is in the crayon box, it's just the color. That said, that doesn't make the fact that black. But that was just the depiction, that was for today. So we wouldn't have no, uh, 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 no way for the white man to fool us on who the prophets were. What they look like. That's why it's listed in the Bible today, so we know what we are, who we are, what they look like back in the day, and correlated with now. All right. What is your nationality? What? What's your nationality? You cheat. You cheat. I'm studying with us. Okay. Say what? I'm black. You're black. African American. Black American. Black American. Okay. Yeah. I tell you what African American is. 
And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Now, it's saying a lot. Your nationality is going to be changed. You're going to be renamed. You're going to be astonishment, meaning something amazing to all of the nations. When they look at you, they clutch their purse and they cross the other side of the street. I've seen something on Facebook, right? It's a white man playing with a lion. They say that this is some of the things that the so-called white man would do. He'll play with a lion, but when he sees the so-called black man, he'll cross on the other side of the street. Meaning he looks at you more viciously than he looks at a ferocious animal. Because you are an animal to him. Those laws never switch. That's why they can shoot you down in the street without a care. You have to be mindful of that because you represent all that they hate. See, the older brothers, they already think that they got the older people. You are the threat. Why? Because the youth are the ones that's supposed to rise up and be the leaders. That's why they put you to death at a drop of a dime. That's right. Because you represent all that's powerful in, in, in the black nation. Because you're in the prime of your life right now. You're at the epitome of your strength. You're only going to get stronger from 22 all the way up to 35. Unless you get sick or something. But typically, you're only going to grow in strength. You're supposed to grow in knowledge. But if you're not following these laws, statutes, and commandments, you're just the very built and strong, stupid dude. You understand? You have to get into these laws, statutes, and commandments. Now, give me this here. Something occurred, uh, 1 Maccabees 3 and 48. Something occurred from the time that we were put, mentioned by God as a holy people greatest nation above all the nation that, nations that's upon the face of the earth. Now we're diminished to this point of view. So, the brother was bringing out, after he read Revelations and all of that, he said, well, where did this thing come from? We're going to show you. Bring it out. First Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. This is the history of when the so-called white man, because he's not a white man, we only say so-called white man to help you identify who we're talking about. But the Bible already lists him. His biblical name is Edom. He is the Edomites that the Bible, or that God hates in the Bible. That's who he is. This is when they became an organized nation and they went on the rampage and they gained dominion of the earth from that moment on all the way up to this moment today. Read. And laid open the book of the law. This is what they did. They laid open the book of the law. They laid open the Bible. What did they do when they laid open the book of the law? Read. When the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their image. This is how this image got into the, 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 the concept of God in the Bible. Because they took the, our images out, our black faces out of the Bible, and they put their faces in the Bible, and they pushed that doctrine in the earth. Bring it out. But who is this then? If this is contrary to the Bible, then who is it? Give me first uh, second Corinthians 11 and 3. Shabbat. Give me a water. Who is this man then? If he does not belong in the Bible, and he sought to paint his own likeness and his own image in our Bible. Who is it? But I fear, lest by any means, 
as the serpent beguiled Eve. Just like the black woman got tricked in the garden, it's the same thing that Paul is saying. I don't want you to be tricked. Right? Through his subtlety, through his trickery, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. God, Paul, is saying, he don't want you to be corrupted through the simplicity of Christ. Meaning, it's a simple thing to know what Christ looked like when you read the Bible. It's a simple thing to know who Christ came for when you read the Bible. That's right. Popular belief says something different than the Bible. Bible is something totally different than Christianity. It's just under the disguise. It's like the black woman who puts herself as being a loyal woman, but behind your back, she's an adulteress. Same exact thing, because when you find out that she was cheating on you, you are surprised. Because she's soft-spoken. She's very nice. She buys you tennis shoes. You understand? That's the exact same thing, vice versa. Read. <clears throat> For if he that cometh Preacheth another Jesus. Who came and preached another Jesus? Who came and preached another Jesus? Because if you look at the, uh, the depictions of Christ, ain't they different? Which one of them correlates with the Bible, though? This one. So who came? Who came and preached another Jesus? Who came? Who came and preached this man? Who came and preached this man? You can say. It. Sister, you said you studied with uh, the Edomites, yeah. Edomites so-called white men, read. Whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. How will we bear with those people who came with another gospel, with this Bible? We're going to pick apart what, somebody's, what somebody taught us with the words of the Most High. This is what occurred. We're given new doctrines. We're given new laws. As a matter of fact, they're telling us the law, statutes, and commandments are done away with. This is why the black woman can dress the way she want to dress. This is how the black woman can com commit whoredom and make the black woman a whore. You understand? Because we violated the law, statutes, and commandments That's of the right. Most High God. That's this right. is why we were placed on cargo slave ships. Now, when we're rebuking or correcting, we're telling our people, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. That's not judging. But give me a, uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Or is that 2 Corinthians 6 and 9? 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. 6 and 2. 6 and 2. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. 6 and 2. 6 and 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? The saints are the Israelites. Y'all know what an adjective is, right? It's a colorful way of describing something. You know what a synonym is, right? A synonym, synonym is something that is synonymous with the word that you're looking up. So when we hear words like saints, righteous, elect, give me some more words. Special. Special. All of these words describe one nation of people, and that's the 12 tribes of Israel, the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. Read. Psalms 148 and 14. Here's an example. He also exalteth the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even the children of Israel. Even, meaning indeed, the children of Israel. That are, They are the saints. You are the saints. Read that again, First Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 6 and 2. Did ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? The saints will judge the world. Read, come on. And if the world shall be judged by you. Now, if this big job is placed in your hand, it's saying, if the world shall be judged by you, read. Are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Now it's saying, are you unworthy to judge small matters if you were given a big matter of judging the whole earth? Are we allowed to judge? Read that again from the top for the young man. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? According to the Bible, who are the saints? Not me. <laughs> we are not saints. That might very well not we be. We are not saints because what I'm of the Adam and Eve, remember? Saints are the Israelites. Adam and Eve is thousands of years before it's talking about the saints. So who is the saints according to the verse right here? Read. And if the world shall be judged by you, 
are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Now it's saying this big job of judging the world is going to be placed in your hands. If this big job that you were given, are you unworthy to judge small matters? Let's, let's find out what small matters that we're allowed to judge. Read verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now we're just going to infuse common sense right now in our conversation. Now, y'all know there exists black serial killers, right? Who are they today? The young guys, the gang members, those are the serial killers in our community, right? Yeah. It's safe to say if you these dudes is running around killing one another and they're getting multiple bodies, 10 and 15 bodies, and then they're orchestrating the deaths of other young men and women, is it not safe to say you ain't gonna get the kingdom of heaven? You will not get the kingdom based off of your wickedness. Is it safe to say that? Unless they repent. But if they're going on the same road that they're going on all the way up to the day that they die, is it not safe to read? Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous. But not, be not deceived, neither fornicator. Fornicators. I'll give you an example. A fornicator deals with sexual sin. Fornication comes in all forms. Boyfriend and girlfriend, that's fornication because there's laws that govern the law of marriage, which is adultery, all right? When you violate bestiality when a man has sex with a dog and a woman has sex with a dog you're up so, under the law of adultery you're violating that law that's what so, fornication is involved in that's what fornication means it says read that again be not deceived neither fornicate so if a black woman or a young man black man latino man latino woman if they are having multiple multiple partners i mean every week going to the club Get the new man, because that's really what happens in our community. Every week the black woman goes out specifically and the Latino woman goes out specifically to find that man, especially in her early 20s. That's the exact same thing we do. We go out to the clubs to find that woman, right? Imagine 52 weeks in a year. Going out every Friday, every Saturday, that's at least 52 men, 52 women under your belt. It's saying that they will not inherit the king. That's common sense. If they done that all the way up to the day they die without repenting for it, would they get the kingdom? No. Read. Nor idolaters. Nor idolaters, meaning idol worshipers. But there are many things that is considered idol. See, like, what's idol? I would want to give you five. Like, as an example, young man, what, what is an idol? Somebody you look up to. See? That's smart. That's intelligent. You place somebody that you look up to as an idol in your life, right? He is above God in our eyes, like Michael Jordan. We want to be like Michael Jordan instead of being like Christ. We want to follow what Mike Tyson says, dude, or what um, one of the rap famous rappers say, dude, instead of what Christ says, does. You got um. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. Read up. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Now, rebellion, meaning being rebellious to these law, statutes, and commandments, you're just like a witch. You might as well cast spells and put eye of newts and frog legs in a cauldron and, 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 and heat them up on a pot and try and make a daggone um, potion. Read. And stubbornness is as inequity and idolatry. And stubbornness, rebelliousness and stubbornness. But to what? It's like witchcraft and idolatry. To what? Rebellious to the law, statutes, and commandments. Stubborn against the law, statutes, and commandments. When we bring out these law, statutes, and commandments, when you're bucking up, I don't, I just don't believe that. It doesn't matter what you believe. It's what the Bible says. We yeah. warned you. See you. Bye. That's Read, right. uh, back, back up to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians Read chapter 6, verse 3. No, verse 2. And if the world shall be judged by you. You're right. Below nine, so jump down oh, back now. Okay. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? This is a small matter. We can say these things. Just like if you keep playing in traffic, one day you're going to get hit. That's common sense, and it's true. You can't beat the odds. You can't beat the uh, the numbers. The numbers don't lie. So the more times you run in the street, the more times you play with the basketball, you're bound to get hit. Be not deceived, neither fornicators 
nor idolatry, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That's homosexual. Read. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now watch this. Paul's letting you know all of these characteristics you will not inherit the kingdom of God. So that means that you're an adulterer, you're an idol worshiper, you're an effeminate, you're a thief, you're a drunkard, and so on and so forth, right? Just like all of us were. Read. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God, as such were some of you. See, some of the disciples that followed Christ used to be extortioners, used to be effeminate, used to be homosexual, used to be masculine women. Understand that? Used to be. Give me um, um, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. We don't go off of what you were in the past, nor does God go off of what you were in the past. God only goes off of one thing. This is the thing. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Read it again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Read it one more time. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So if you were an adulteress in the past, an adulterer in the past, you follow these law, statutes, and commandments, no one gives a dag on what you were prior to the day that you repented. God only worries about that day. That's the only day you must worry about. Only the fools who want to remain wicked, only the wicked people who want to say, oh man, you used to be like that. You was a gang member. You was a drug dealer. Just so they can maintain the lifestyle of wickedness that they want to do. I want to be an adulterer. I want to be all of these things. Right? But what, what, what must we do from the moment on that we find out these things are sins? We repent. Deuteronomy 22, 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22. Verse 5. Not, not, we, we're not out here to bash the black woman or to bash the black man. We're going to be equal. We're not going to be a respectful person. We're going to tell the black woman what's wrong. We're going to tell the black man what's wrong. A lot of us don't want to hear it, though. They don't want to. They want. They want Christ to come down and change their life for them. They want him to sprinkle some pixie dust on them or something and say, "Okay, your life has changed." But that's not how it's going to occur. That's not how it's going to occur. That's the change right. is going to come in you. Then Christ is going to come. That's right. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Now we're all in agreement that we don't want our grandsons to run around with dresses on and put makeup on. We all understand that. But why can't we see the flip side of the same coin? <coughs> Your daughters are not supposed to walk around as men. Give me that. Where is that? Is that in Baruch? Baruch. Chapter 6, verse 11. Yea, they will give them to the common harlot and deck them as men. Because the whores were the ones who were dressed up out of order. See, but our women don't know how to not be whores today because it's uh, the fashion industry push this or the so-called white man pushed a certain dress code on the black woman but they didn't know that the original people who dressed out of order were considered harlots or hoes or whores read that again yea they will give thereof to the common harlots and deck them as men with garments meaning they put on men's garments on the women pants read being gods of silver and gods of gold. Because now these pants have been risen to high heights of being a god of silver and gold over God's law, statutes, and commandments to them. That's why a black woman or a Latino woman can't take the pants off. That's why the black man don't know how to not be a whoremonger. He don't know how to treat the black woman like the, like the princess that she is, the daughter of Sarah that she is. The scriptures say there shall be no whores of the daughters of Israel. That's but right. guess what the black man does? He diminishes you black women, Latino women, into whores. He don't want to marry you. He get the milk and disregard the cow. Ain't you supposed to buy the cow first, then you get the milk? All right now. Read. Being gods of silver 
and gods of gold and wood. Yet cannot these gods save themselves? The, the pants, they don't even exist, so they can't save themselves. Read. Yet cannot these gods save themselves from rust and moths, though they be covered with purple raiment? So if, that's all I want to know on that, if your pants mean nothing, they definitely can't save you for the wrath to come. Give me um, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 5, because everybody desires when Christ come back. I know my grandma, my mom, oh, I can't wait till Jesus come back. But is that going to be a good thing for the wicked? Think about it. You really, we really got to consider these things and be like, if you believe in God, these are some of the thoughts that have to go through your head. What is God going to do to me if he came, if he sent Christ back to death? That is a question that everybody who believes should be considered. Second Thessalonians. Totally. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5 Read out Which is manifest token of the righteous judgment of God Matter of fact Verse 6 Sin it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that were excuse me to them that trouble you Stop Stop Read that again Read it again Sin it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. This is what Christ is saying through Paul. He's saying it's a righteous thing to recompense. Recompense means payback. Read that again. Sin, it is a righteous thing with it's God. It's a righteous thing with God, not man, with God. That's right. To recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. To Amen. recompense meaning to pay back those that trouble you. Who is your trouble right now, brother? Who is our trouble right now? When we earn our living, work, day to day, but we have to pay tax for somebody that didn't earn the money for us. We don't, we don't, we don't um, benefit from nothing that Bank America does when they work. Why ain't taxes given to our community to fix the potholes in the streets? To beautify our homes when our roofs fall in and it's $30,000 to fix it and we don't make that much money in a year, how the hell are we going to get a new roof on our house? Read out. Do we benefit from what they do? But you benefit, I mean, they benefit from, from what you do because the scriptures say you are yet this day in your captivity, yes, subject yes, to payments. You are not free. Read. True. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. And to you that are troubled, you that are going through oppression, you that are in poverty, stuck in the gutter, stuck in the day and job, you rest with us. Why? Because you're the poor. You're the poor. You must be following these laws, statutes, and commandments. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven. Now, when that sky cracked and Christ is ascending down from heaven, do you really believe that it's going to be, it's going to be peaches and cream? It's going to be rainbows and bunny rabbits jumping? You believe that? Then you're a crazy man. Because this is the day of the Lord. Read. Heaven with his mighty angel. He's going to come with a legion of armies. A legion of angels, read, in flaming fire, taking vengeance. He's going to take vengeance. Read. On them that know not God. Because none of our people know God. So not only is the enemy of God going to get killed, right. the enemies of his own nation, his own sons and daughters. Yes. Because that's who you are. You are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. That's you right. You are descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's, that's right. That's your position. Don't give that glory away to nobody else. True. But guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to get put to death. Yes. You're going to die when Christ makes his second coming if you don't repent. Read. And that, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord so Jesus. When we present this gospel, meaning the good news, that's what it is. Right. How much, I don't want to say gooder, <laughs> better. How much better of news can you hear then Christ came, died, resurrected, and will come back and return to this earth to redeem you out of slavery. Can you get any better news than that? You can't get no, no better news than no, that. No. But we want to give our glory away to everybody else. The Bible no, tells us not to do that. The Bible tells us not to do that. I need you to read that again from the top. I'm not going to interrupt it just so he can read it again from the top. Verse 6. Sin, it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation 
to them that trouble you and to you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be re revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Because that is the day of the Lord. That is the second coming of Christ. It's not going to be beaches and cream. It's going to be death and destruction to the wicked. But we always want to give the good news away. I need you to read Baruch 4, verse 3. Baruch chapter 4, verse 3. Hold up. We always want to give our glory away and include everyone else. But did the so-called white man or the Edomite, did he include you in Valhalla? Did he include you on Mount Olympus? Where was you at? In his concept of heaven, were you there? And if you were there, you were subhuman. If you were there, you was a slave. You wasn't equal. Me. Baruch. Chapter 4, verse 3. Give not thy honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee, to a strange nation. If you hit the Powerball, you ain't giving your money away to nobody. Why do you want to include something that's so glorious as the kingdom of heaven with other nations? Why do you want to share that when it only belongs to the 12 tribes of Israel? You want to share that with other nations. But if you hit the Powerball, how many people are going to benefit from that? And that's a lot of money. You hit for $300 million. That's a lot of money. How many people share? Y'all heard of the war, uh, what is them, the curse stories of the people that won the, uh, the lotto and all of that? Their life never turned out right. But nine times out of ten, they get kidnapped by a family member because they're not sharing the wealth. But we want to share something that's so glorious, which is the kingdom of heaven with all the other nations. That's right. It only belongs to you. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.